Hey everybody. So, uh, um, I've been revisiting my uh, modular wall system, um, my fantasy stuff, and um, I this is mostly made out of Aristarch's molds. It's got like a few little pieces from some some molds that I made. Um, this is all. I, I made a couple of these, a few different versions of these, uh, like uh, I have like a, a solid wall piece and then I have ones like this where they have like little portcullises that can slide in and out of them. And then I'm thinking about doing some wood versions that where it looks like uh, they could just be smashed open versus something like this. It's like iron. Um, so they are, they are totally compatible with uh, her starts molds, right? Um, and then I've been, I designed this system where they kind of pop together and then this is very stable. Uh, it won't fall over or, or when it's, if it's jostled or moved or whatever, it's not gonna topple over. So I think I am gonna stick with that, but I've been building out, I've been working on my molds. Um, and then I did a video when I did these, you know, I did a video about it, but I feel like I really just glazed over it. I didn't really talk that much about using what kind of materials I use. Um, cause I, I like to use, uh, like foam board and, and there's, there's some technique involved and stuff like that. So I kind of wanted to like go into more detail about how I, how I sculpt and stuff. And then, and also doing the mold making. So this is going to be a two-part video, um, and then I'm not actually going to do any casting in this video. This that's going to be in part two. Um, but the, in this, the first part is just all going to be sculpting and molding about how I make how I how I sculpt the foam board to make rough cut looking stone pieces for the for the plaster molds, and then how I build a a mold box. For, uh, for doing a dump mold. So anyways, yeah, and then also um, later on um, in, in the next video, I think I'm gonna do a different paint job for these because um, at the time when I designed these, I was really into frost grave and I liked, I liked the snow kind of dusting, you know, on the top, it's just plaster that's been kind of sealed down, but it's not sealed down well enough. It comes off, you know, like during gameplay and stuff. And then like, I look in like the, I put these things in like a crate in my, you know, Ikea, like Calax or whatever. And like, I've seen the stuff coming off of them. So I think I'm going to do a different paint job because I want them to also be more utilitarian. I want them to just look like stone instead of snow covered stone. Like when we're using these to play rain and hell or whatever, and there's snow all over, it's like, it's like, oh, this must be a really cold spot in hell. Um, but anyway, so part one, molding and sculpting. And then part two, we'll get into it later. Hey everybody. Um, so I'm, I'm playing around with my, uh, my modular fantasy wall system that I started a long time ago. Um, I'm looking at these designs and um, so this is like almost entirely made out of her starts molds and it's got a couple of my molds in there and this is very very top heavy right because it has these spindly little legs and then the all this weight on top it, it does it top heavy right um, so but it doesn't really wobble that much because these uh, these kind of lock it into place. Um, and then like the original design, these have, um, this is MDF. And, and I don't think I had the laser cutter when I designed these originally. I just cut them out with the hobby saw. And I can do much more intricate designs now with the laser cutter but I don't know if I want to <laughs> kind of want to just simplify things and do, um, 
just cast pieces. So I'm kind of looking at my design. I think I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to rework things. Uh, so these are, these are designed, this is not one of the ones that has, this is just supposed to be open. These, um, these are designed to have these little pieces that kind of fit into them that slide in and out like, um, uh, uh, portcullises like this is iron and I was kind of working on some stuff that would be more like wood because I wanted to um, I wanted it to look more like it could just be broken and forced down with some with some force uh, instead of being iron so this is this is just styrene um, and uh, yeah like sprue some some recycle sort of upcycled uh, plastic and then this is granny grading this stuff is um it's used in needlepoint it's uh it's super super cheap this stuff is like mostly recycled this you know styrene plastic card is super super cheap but i'm as i was looking at these i wanted to make them even more modular where these could be like storefronts or like houses you know where like for like D and D or something, if you wanted to sort of simulate like a um, a corridor with like houses alongside of it or or whatever, and then little storefronts. So I think that I I I like these designs, and then I'm just seeing a few things that I kind of want to change. So I think I'm going to do some sculpting. Um, Trying to decide if I need the the little wing cutout things on the top to keep things in place or not. I see why I did that, why I designed it that way. Yeah, hmm. Maybe I will just keep going with this system. So with these, right, the um when I originally designed these, these were supposed to look more like this. This was like the original design, but this is too short. Um, here's a like a heroic scale mini next to this. This is why this never got painted. This is like um, I think I just scrapped this design. But then these these portcullis things can slide in and out of them. So I really like this mold. I want to keep this mold, but I want to do something with it to make it a little more functional. Um, I don't like this mold as much. So I think I'm going to rework this archway thing somehow to make it a little more functional. I might recycle a mold. So, um, yeah, I'll sh and then also I think that I'm going to give these guys a different paint job because when I originally designed these, uh, it was for Frostgrave. But we use them for other things besides Frostgrave. I, I, I've come to regret the snow because I want to use them in like all different kinds of settings, not just in snowy settings. So, hmm. yeah, what I'm thinking is, is maybe changing this so that these have these little cobblestone pieces on the top because it's slightly short. So I could do that and then that would fit in there and changing this design so that um, these can slide in and out. So, all right, I need to grab some foam board and I'll show you how I do this stuff. Okay, um, I've, got, I've got a T-square. Um, I have a like carpet knife style X-Acto and, and I have, and then this thing, this uh, cutting mat thing that has the inches laid out on it because everything, all of my system is all inch combinatorics. So I can't, rec can't, can't, can't recommend enough having a good T-square. Um, I have a collection. <laughs> and, then, and then these things are just fantastic. So first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of uh, foam board. And then this is just... Um, this is half inch uh, foam board. This is the thick stuff. Present, or presentation board, um, foam board. You might have heard it called any number of those things. 
So the rest of these guys, um, I think that this, so it needs to be two inches tall. What I should do though is just cut out a whole piece um, because um, if I have a whole section, then I can just work in, in uh, you know, sculpt a whole wall piece out of it and then cut it up into castable pieces. So let's see who we got up here. Four inches by three inches. It doesn't need to be all too too exact because the obviously I can cut things down later to shape a little better. So I'm just going to cut in my, going to rough in my lines um, and get the shape. And then easy does it like just make passes. Um, and you should, you should not cut it how I'm doing it. <laughs> cut, cut down and towards yourself, but not towards your leg, you know, or your hand. Just cut, cut down and, and towards yourself in a controllable manner because this is not a, a comfortable angle. Um, I'm trying to just show you guys how to do this for, for the sake of the video, but um, you, you want to cut this direction because this is a natural cutting motion for our arms. Sort of more like this. But just do it in passes, you know, don't don't try and do it all in one cut. Just easy does it, do it in a few passes. Okay, and then another thing that comes in super, super handy is a good uh, circle template. Um, so I want to do another kind of Roman arch thing. Just kind of looking at this, just eyeballing it. Just to see how this stuff looks. So there should be a little more, little room down here at the bottom, because these um, it needs some of these little free sliding feet. Oh, where are they? These ones. It needs some of these in the bottom, so that's going to be about a half inch thick, and or two of them, like uh, yeah, like that one. So yeah, that needs to be about an inch down here. So I guess I'm just, I'm redesigning these because I think that they need to be uh, slightly taller and I want it, want it to be all one uh, cast piece, but um, so, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to commit and start doing some lines. So I'm just going to center that and like I said, you know, this doesn't have to be like too, too exact. It's just, uh, I just want, uh, I want these to be, you know, roughly the right, the right size, like inch wise. And then, um, measure these. Get my inch marks in there. So this is just going to tell me where my uh, my like Roman arch thing belongs. Is that right? Yeah. So the arch is going to have the keystone like right here. Do 
like one of these or one of these Alright, decided to change this change that. So I did I am gonna go with a Roman arch, but it's, it's a different style. Like one of these um just like kind of pizza pizza slice type arches. Um that looks a little better. So now I know that this is gonna be one solid piece, this is gonna be one solid piece, so um, I can still use, I mean, these, these, um, these, these kind of pieces where it's just like, half, you know, an inch wide, half an inch tall, they're actually really useful. So if I have another mold that, um, you know, can, uh, can have a bunch of different, uh, size bricks in it, I guess, uh, kind of more like center blocks at this scale where they're pretty big, <laughs> but, um, the it'll come in handy so now i'm just going to cut into it but i want to try to make sure and keep this straight all the way through so i'm going to line it up right put it on my cutting mat this is all just going to be this is all going to be waste this part in the middle so i'm not worried about that but everything that's on this side, like the, I want to keep this nice and straight, and, or I want to keep my cuts nice and straight. So I'm going to take my time and then just, you know, try to make sure that I'm cutting straight down. Because, you know, this, this side is going to get cast, and then I want it to mirror on the other side. I want to keep all, keep all that straight. So... Alright, that's about as good as it's going to get. Alright, and now I'm going to cut my arch. Once again, you know, I'm trying to be careful. Just taking my time. And I'm going to cut this part out, this middle part out. Um, but I'm and I'm not going to cut any of. The, well, actually, I am going to cut. <laughs> I'm going to cut here and here. And I, can, I can go ahead and do that. So, so this will be one complete mold. This piece on top. And then this will be different bricks down here on the bottom. Okay, so now, you know, I can start peeling the paper off on this side, because um, this side is just going to stay intact. And then I'm going to start actually sculpting on the other side. But you can see how this stuff, you know, when you pull the paper off, it really does have a nice, like, rough cut stone look to it. Um, okay, so, if I go in here, right, I don't want to cut all the way through, I just want to sort of simulate that cut. And I'm, you know, I'm turning the piece, not turning my arm at a weird angle. Try and make sure I keep all of this intact. Okay, and I can pull the paper off. Those cuts are done. 
Okay, so this part can actually be like kind of the hard part for people. It's just like turning your brain off and then trying not to make uh, patterns. Um, but yeah, I just want to kind of give it a rough like field stone look in here. So field stone is going to mean that it's just like stuff that uh, like a farmer would have picked up out of his field, you know, and then made a, a stone wall out of. So they're going to have like random shapes. You don't want to have like a nice uniform um, stone, like you want all the, the shapes to be kind of random. So if you have trouble turning your brain off, you know, like maybe um, you could even like print out like a, a drawing or like a, a picture of a, a stone, like a wall that's like at the right scale like this. And you could put it on there and sort of trace on the um, the shapes with like a pencil or something. In fact, doing a pencil first is not a bad idea. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of draw in some like little random kind of field stone uh, shapes, and then come in and cut cut them out. Actually, but not all the way. Just you know, like part. Just simulate that they're going through there. Because like the flatter this side, the better. Because when that side gets glued down, and then also when when the the plaster mold gets made, you want this side to be completely intact. It's gonna it's gonna help help later. So I'm just gonna go around and do some stones on this side. Okay, so I've got my shapes in there, and then you know like um. It's all kinds of stuff that I can do to kind of come in and add some texture. Like I like to use uh, sandpaper, and um, you can get these little these little things, these um, like little puff balls. And if you do hit it with the heat gun, it will get rid of those. But just watch out because it's aggressive and it you know it can make the thing like bow in on itself. I'm not going to do that because. <laughs> Trying to be a little more careful with this. It's a little thin, and flimsy, um, but I will just sand on it a little bit to get some nice texture. But you see that the this side, you know, it looks like the rough cut like fieldstone, and then this side is completely solid. That is important. <laughs> It'll save you a lot of headache in the end. You don't want to have to cast up a whole bunch of little teeny tiny pieces like this, and then piece them together like a puzzle because it's a nightmare. Um, okay, so that's about right. That's about how I want that to look. Um, so for these pieces, this is, so this is about one and a half inches tall. And then I can cut down some um, I could just cut these down like this and do like one cut here and get this out. Um, but I think, huh. Yeah, so I think that this should be one solid piece or this should be one solid piece, this should be one solid piece, and then this should be one solid piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and ch uh, chop this up. But I will put, so I'll, I'll, I'll put all of these in one bowl, right? So that I have a whole a whole section that I can cast, um, like one side of the mold. So I only have to do it twice, you know? Uh, I don't have to pour the same mold like multiple, multiple times to get one uh, wall section. Okay, have to go out and run an errand. Uh, yeah, this is this is big and unwieldy. Um, so I've had people ask me before about foam board. This is the kind of stuff that you want. Like this is Target brand. I got this at Target. Well, it's not Target brand. It's um, uh, Elmer's, you know. But this stuff, it, um, it's it's strong enough to stand up to sculpting, and it's cheap. It's still like three dollars for a three pack of like a big, big size, you know, um, thing of uh, foam board. 
but you can't use the stuff from the dollar store because the stuff from the dollar store is like, um, it's just too flimsy. It doesn't stand up to being sculpted. So, okay, so I, I, I want to do something. And then also, these are about, they're just shy of a quarter of an inch thick. So if you put like four of these on top of there of each other, it's close to, it's, you know, maybe five is like about an inch. So if you, you know, if you are using like an inch system like this, you can use these. It's just that this stuff is nice because it's, it's exactly a half inch thick. So it's a little easier to work with. But what I want to do is I want to make some, just a, a, a flagstone mold kind of like this that, um, but not a solid piece. This is one solid piece. I want um, individual flagstones so that I can uh, just t um, pour as many as I want and then kind of arrange them however I like. Uh, do I want to go with something? Yeah. Yeah, I like, I like that look. Okay. So I'm just gonna make a, um, I'm gonna make another mold that's like six inches by six inches of um, uh, flagstones. But also like these, um, uh, I have I have these, these are from another mold. These are a pain in the ass. Uh, <laughs> they, the like making a whole bunch of little bricks like this and then making something out of them is a huge pain in the ass. It's much it's much nicer to have a solid piece like this and then to just sculpt in like little bricks into it. Um you know like like so where you have like it looks like it's multiple bricks but you don't have to mess with you know um casting these and then gluing them together cuz that's a huge pain in the ass. So I think that what I'm going to do, like I've been looking at this design and I think I'm going to keep the the wing shapes on the side that lock into the the pillars. And then I'm just going to put something on top, like little flagstone pieces like this to, to hide the top. And then I'm not, I'm going to get rid of the snow. I like the snow, but it's just, it's not utilitarian enough. So... Okay, I'm gonna cut some flagstones out of this stuff. Okay, so I've got some little flagstone shapes cut out. Um, you know, like I said, it's a little hard to see. The camera just doesn't pick it up that well because it's so bright white. But just take my word that it's gonna look like that. <laughs> but um, since it's not one solid piece, you know, I can just cast as many of these as I need to and make whatever I need to out of them. All right, so on to casting or, or mold making. Um, so I have done lots and lots of molds uh, in in my time, right? Um, and I've experimented with lots of different types of silicone and um, lots of different ways of making molds. And I think that this is the best way for making uh, dump molds like this, where you have one side is flat and then you just dump in um, the, the, the plaster or um, resin or whatever, and, uh, and then just let it cure. For, for doing a single, single side dump, dump mold, I think this is the best way to do it. So I will show you how I do this. Okay, after having done this like multiple, multiple times, <laughs> uh, I can safely say that making the actual mold is my least favorite part of this process. But I do have a solution. Um, Legos. So if you, uh, I have a Lego store near me. Um, you don't have to spend a fortune on Legos like the you can go to thrift stores, you can go to um, just all kinds of places or, or just go to the Lego store and then just buy the pieces that you need in bulk. And I think that's like the most economical way. 
But basically, the, a good rule of thumb is that you want about a half an inch around your molded pieces. Um, and it doesn't have to be uh, um, on the inside. You don't need those, those kind of margins. But on the outside, if you don't want the mold to fail and then stuff will start spilling out. It's like the, the, the parts that are going to take the most abuse are around the sides when you're like demolding and stuff like that. That's the thing. That's the part that's going to fail first. So basically, I'm just going to go around and I'm going to make a little Lego box around the side um, that is the shape that I need. And I swear, like, this is the easiest way to do it. Okay, I've got my mold box built, and um, uh, so this is the easiest way, hands down, that I've found to make the actual mold box, right? So forget messing around with hot glue guns or, you know, glue, period. The best way that I've found to make the bottom is to use packing tape. Um, so what I want to do is I, I do kind of want to arrange things. So, okay, I know how these are going to be set up in my mold, like so. And then that's basically all the cast pieces that I need to make the side. Um, and then these are going to be my top pieces. So I'm going to make two different molds. I'm going to make a mold for these. And then I'm going to make a mold for these. But I don't want to leave a whole lot of wasted space, but I want to leave enough space to have good margins. So I'm just going to make sure that this is like taut, you know, tight on the bottom and flat. All right, got my mold box built and this may look flimsy, you know, this may look cheesy, but I have never had one of these fail on me ever. So, you know, it works perfectly like uh, I want to say every time I have not had one fail yet knock on wood, but um, Just gonna press these down But I'm not even gonna worry about like hot gluing the sides or any of that um, I will go ahead and make another mold box for these though because I, I, I want to do my silicon Silicone pouring at the same time. So I'm gonna make another mold for these Okay mixing silicone <laughs> Um, like I said, you know, I've used a lot of silicones too, and I feel like this is the best silicone out there for doing these kinds of molds where you have one side where you just, you know, you dump in whatever the plaster or whatever, and then you, uh, you know, pull it, pull it apart. These are really rigid. They're very strong. They last forever. And, um, just really good stuff. It's a little bit more expensive, Moldstar 30, uh, but yeah, smooth on Moldstar 30, platinum. This is just the best stuff and it's one to one. Um, there's, there's no math involved in it. There's, you know, no weird chemical reactions. It's just like a, um, well, there is a weird chemical reaction, but it's a, uh, it's, it's easier than most. Okay. So we've got an A part and then a B part. And basically you just dump them together and silicone, the only thing that silicone sticks to is silicone except for glass um, because there is silica in glass. So if you just use something like this, just a nice little plastic measuring cup with a pour spout on it, that will do the trick. So 
Yeah, you just pour these together and then you stir until it's completely combined and then that's, you're good to go. That's all the math involved in that. All right, so I'm gonna fill this one first because I'm more worried about having coverage on this one because it's a taller mold. And then I'm gonna do this one second. And uh, there's a trick I'll show you if I run out. I think I have plenty, but I think I have more than enough. But if I run out, then there's a trick to stretch it out. Okay, yeah, so basically just stir it up till it's, you know, one color. And um, you're going to uh, kind of whip some air bubbles into it, stirring it. So, and then one way to get rid of those, since you don't want the air bubbles on your cast pieces, is, um, well, one way is you can put your mold in the fridge. And when you put the mold, the, the uh, silicone in the fridge, it will slow down the curing time, and then those air bubbles will have more time to come to the surface um, and off of your cast pieces. But the, the, um, the one thing that works really, really well is if you pour in, instead of pouring on top, directly on top of your piece that you want to cast, is pour it into a corner. Um, like, and, and even if you kind of get a little bit of elevation, kind of covering this up, it's a little hard to show. So I'm gonna pour it into a corner and then I'm gonna get like a nice thin steady stream and that's gonna get help it um, to sort of like self level and also just get rid of those air bubbles. The air bubbles are gonna want to um, they're gonna want to rise to the surface and they're, they're or they're gonna kind of flow around the pieces instead of collecting on top uh, in spots like like that where I just pointed. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm more worried about this one because it's it needs more clearance on the, it needs to be taller. So I'm just gonna try and fill this one up first and, uh, and then I'm gonna worry about this one, make sure that I have enough. But yeah, if you just fill it up from, from one side, from one corner like that, it really, really helps. It seems to really help with the air bubbles, uh, not getting them onto the, the, the cast pieces themselves. So, okay, same thing with this one. But the shallower, the shallower molds are less problematic, basically. The shallow, shallower molds, it's easier for the air bubbles to just pop up to the surface if you just give it enough good amount of time to cure. But if it's hotter, you know, if it's, if it's hot in your workshop or, you know, in like your garage or your basement or wherever you're doing this, that's going to change how fast this stuff cures. And if it's colder, it's going to slow down the curing time so you, it has more time for the air bubbles to get out. So yeah, if these molds were going to fail, they would have done it already. Um, the, you can see that it's, and they're just going to keep getting harder, you know, from now on, like from the original mixing process. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, but you can see like there's no silicone pouring out on the sides. And this, this is just the best way that I've found to do these kinds of molds. Put the last little bit in this one. Okay, it's the next day. Um, the, the workable time for the, the, let's see, the cure time for this stuff is six hours. Um, you can see there's like, there's a, just the teeniest, tiniest little bit of silicone that came through the tape. But the thing, the thing that's important is having good contact on like these edges, because um, if you have to do like major surgery to get your uh, molded pieces out, that's gonna, you know, permanently 
be on your mold. So like the less, the better contact you have and you know, just the teeniest, tiniest little bit of silicone came through the tape. Um, but you can see that this is still flat and that's the important part because um, you want this side to be level because this side needs to be flat to glue things together, etc. So, but yeah, that's how, that's how quick and easy cleanup is. Um, just toss that literally, you know, seconds. And, and then these get reused. So I think that, I, I really do think that this is the best way to, uh, to make these kinds of molds. But so the, the important part is that this side is actually flat because that side is when you, when you pour in your, um, uh, resin or plaster or whatever, you want this to stay nice and flat so that when it dries, it's nice and level. But I'm going to, uh, demold these guys and, uh, Next, we will go on to casting. <laughs> 